Look around. Depending on where you are, you may see lights, screens, and other electronics. Our entire modern world revolves around electricity, and two of the men to thank for this are Nikola Tesla and Michael Faraday. Although both Michael Faraday and Nikola Tesla encountered issues, they overcame these encounters to explore electricity and its applications, while encountering and exchanging new ideas which led to impacts that remain important today. The beginning of Michael Faraday's and Nikola Tesla's exploration into electricity included the work of many before them. All around the world, people were discovering new ideas about electricity. Thomas Edison had made the filament lamp, Benjamin Franklin began to explain the qualities of lightning, and Alessandro Volta had invented the battery. These advancements allowed for fresh minds to continue fine-tuning our understanding of electricity. These minds would be Faraday and Tesla, bringing us into a new era of electricity. The intellect and communication skills of these two men also proved to be exceedingly important for the exchanges they were to make. In an interview with Mark Masters, physics head at IPFW, he explained the gift of speaking Faraday possessed. Apparently a very good presenter too, like he would, because they would do presentations and he was very clear, able to be very clear in explaining things to people, so. Meanwhile, he also showed the mental advantages Tesla had. I remember how many languages he spoke, something like five or seven languages. Um, and he was able to, he was able to design things in his head, all right, and then know exactly how they were going to be without ever putting them down on paper and just say, this is going to work and do it and implement it. That's amazing. Both these men had the past and their own skills leading them towards the many encounters they were destined for. In 1812, a satisfied customer gifted Michael Faraday tickets to a lecture by Sir Humphrey Davy. Faraday took notes at the lecture and he bound them into a book that he presented to Davy himself, who was currently working at the Royal Institution of Great Britain. Soon thereafter, Davy required a lab assistant. Recalling Faraday's notes, Davy offered the position to young Michael Faraday, who graciously accepted. Faraday's passion at the Royal Institution became electricity. During his employment, he went on a trip with Davy around Europe, during which he met Alessandro Volta, with whom he discussed electrical science, renewing his interest therein. Faraday would go on to rise through the ranks of the Royal Institution based on his scientific genius, though not with support from Davy, who was a jealous mentor. In 1875, Nikola Tesla enrolled at Austrian Polytechnic University, where he studied mechanical and electrical engineering. It was here that his interest in science, particularly that of electricity, flourished. After a brief stint working at a telegraph company, Tesla moved on to what was intended to be greener pastures. In 1882, he went to work for Continental Edison Company in France, where he pursued his passion of electricity. He worked so well that he was relocated to New York City in 1884 to work with Thomas Edison himself. According to Tesla, Edison offered him a deal in which he would be paid $50,000 to redesign the motor and generator systems for Edison's company. Tesla did so, only to find out that the money he was promised was only a practical joke. In 1885, Tesla quit his job working for Edison. In May of 1821, Michael Faraday was appointed as superintendent of the House of the Royal Institution. Shortly thereafter, Michael Faraday discovered electromagnetic rotation in the homopolar motor, one of the very first electric motors. Three years later, Faraday was elected to the Royal Institution Fellowship, making him a full-fledged member of the organization. He used the resources of his new position to create an experiment through which he discovered the principle of electromagnetic induction. Based on this discovery, he invented the electromagnetic generator, or the dynamo. Faraday continued to climb the ranks of the Royal Institution, as he was then appointed as the first Fullerian Professor of Chemistry. In 1848, and again ten years later, he was even offered the position of President of the Royal Institution though he turned it down both times in favor of a more humble position. Faraday also discovered diamagnetism, a process by which objects repel magnets. Throughout this time of discovery, he was giving lectures and exchanging information with other fantastic scientists of his time. In 1886, Nikola Tesla was an unemployed immigrant, so he started Tesla Electric Light and Manufacturing Company. His business model revolved around spectacular scientific advances. Unfortunately, investors forced Tesla out of his business when he decided to move the business model towards alternating current motors. Ironically, it was this very idea of Tesla's that led to the War of the Currents, a conflict between Tesla and Thomas Edison about the superior electricity system. Throughout this period of conflict, Tesla invented many machines to complement his alternating current system. 
In 1893, Nikola Tesla worked for George Westinghouse to power the world's Columbian Exposition using alternating current electricity. Later, the two worked together again to construct an advanced hydroelectric power plant at Niagara Falls, the most productive plant ever built in its time. In 1901, Tesla went to New York to begin construction on Wardenclyffe Tower, a machine he would use to provide the entire world with free electricity. Unfortunately, Tesla's ambition was not matched by his investors when they discovered that there would be no way to make money off of the tower. In 1911, the project was abandoned. In his later life, Tesla delved into more theoretical projects, including a massive death ray. The exchanges that Faraday made were largely intellectual and economic. The biggest exchange Faraday had was other scientists building off his ideas. Because of Faraday's ideas about electricity and magnetism, James Clerk Maxwell was later able to form the equations for the electromagnetic field. According to Maxwell, Faraday is, and must always remain, the father of that large science of electromagnetism. However, Faraday also released the knowledge of science to the public. Because the Royal Institution kept much of its knowledge to itself, in the correspondence of Michael Faraday it states that, Following his promotion within the Royal Institution, Faraday was able to embark from the beginning of 1826 on expanding the Royal Institution's program of disseminating scientific knowledge. Michael Faraday additionally made economic changes we can see today. Well, we've got lights, right? So, right now, everything, we have, how much do we use electricity for at this point, right? I mean, we can thank both Faraday, Tesla, Edison, all of them, really, for the abilities that we have that we can do all of this stuff. All of those, all of the power is based on, in one way or another, is based on Faraday's fundamental ideas that he put forth. Okay, Tesla worked on the side of getting how do we generate power effectively, which we need. Okay, those kind of have a huge impact on us. Yet, it could be said that the long-term benefits of Tesla are even more plentiful. The impacts Tesla had on the world we have today are innumerable. Major exchanges would be the alternating current and hydroelectric power. Alternating current, Tesla's most impactful exchange, was something invented by Tesla alone. Almost all of the technology we use today uses alternating current electricity. Eventually, Tesla had 40 US patents for different alternating current generators, motors, and transformers. The exchange of hydroelectric power which was something almost entirely pioneered by Tesla, is now growing more and more. The hydroelectric power plant was first built at Niagara Falls and set a precedent for similar plants around the world. Today, we can still see a statue on both sides of the falls. Other inventions and concepts that Tesla's advancements led to include drones, nuclear power, radio, robotics, the modern electric motor, and the remote control. Tesla had such powerful exchanges, it was said by B.A. Berend, were we to seize and to eliminate the results of Mr. Tesla's work, the wheels of industry would cease to turn, our electric cars and trains would stop, our towns would be dark, our mills would be dead and idle. When modern people look into the past and think of impactful scientists, there is no doubt that Faraday and Tesla should be part of the conversation. Despite opposition from his former mentor, Faraday became an incredible influence in the Royal Institution. He used his positions to discover more about the world, his invention of the homopolar motor laid the groundwork for modern electrical infrastructure, changing the way the world of people functions. He also influenced Nikola Tesla. Throughout his life, Tesla faced adversaries in the business world who didn't understand his motivation. Tesla devoted his life to science and forever changed the way we produce and harness electricity. Ultimately, business got in the way of his life's goal of providing the world with free electricity, though he did leave a lasting impact. Despite encounters with problems and selfish fears, both Michael Faraday and Nikola Tesla were able to leave a lasting impact on the world by exploring electricity and exchanging new ideas with others.